So today in uh, my lecture, I will be dealing with uh, primary impression principles and practice of uh, uh, border molding and how uh, final uh, impressions are made. Uh, I hope you will be able to understand what is uh, border molding, final impression, then uh, the different materials that are used for uh, border molding and the secondary impression materials, the different techniques that are involved in doing uh, border molding like single step and incremental step border molding, then uh, importance of posterior palatal seal, the advantages and uh, also uh, a brief outline of the different uh, techniques for compromise ridge conditions. Adventure. The first thing that we're going to look at is the proper tray selection, then uh, making of your primary impression, then fabrication of primary cast. Uh, using the fabric, uh, uh, primary cast, we are going to fabricate a special tray or a custom tray, which is used to again in uh, redo a secondary impression, out of which a master cast or secondary cast is made. And on the secondary cast, you make the denture base, and uh, on which the occlusal rim is fabricated and these occlusal rims are used to carry out the jaw relation uh, procedure and uh, next once your jaw relation is recorded and the centric relation uh, has been uh, achieved so then those uh, rims are mounted on an articulator then the setting of teeth is done that with the principles of uh, teeth setting after which the clinical step you have the wax try in you try the uh, trial denture in the patient mouth and see for aesthetics phonetics and uh, occlusion if once the patient is satisfied and all the conditions are met then you carry out your uh, processing or the flasking procedure wherein you uh, uh, flask the dentures the finished denture or the wax denture then you do the de-waxing and after which curing is uh, uh, done and then once the curing has been completed trimming and polishing and then your denture is delivered to the patient so what is a special tray uh, special tray is nothing but it's a custom-made device prepared for the particular patient which is used to carry and confine and control an impression material while making an impression so that is how the definition goes so a special tray is custom made for one particular patient so please note that a custom tray that is made for one patient cannot be used for an other patient so don't try to uh, use the custom tray of one patient to an other one because it is specifically made on the primary cast of that particular patient and it cannot be used like how your stock trays are being used then why do you think is a, a special tray or a custom made tray required it is used to support the green stick compound so that it adapts to the anatomy of that particular patient then to make out the final impression and also to provide even thickness uniform thickness of the impression material because this custom tray is adapted on the cast on the uh, residual ridge morphology is properly seated on that cast and hence it takes the shape of the residual ridge and there is uniform space or thickness between the custom tray and the primary cast and hence it gives you a uniform thickness of the impression material as well then what are the requirements uh, of a custom tray it should be well adapted to the primary cast then it should be 2 mm thick in the palate area the lingual flange area it and it should be rigid there should be at least 2 mm relief uh, over the entire sulcus area and uh, then the the custom tray should also be free of voids and uh, there should not be any projections or extra uh, acrylic material because it will interfere or it will injure the soft tissue because the soft tissue of a completely edentulous patient is usually very fragile hence we have to be very careful then what are the materials that are used for a custom tray fabrication uh, shellac shellac base plate i hope you would have seen it in your secondary uh, sorry your preclinical prosthodontics and then you can use your cold cure uh, resin or your light cure resin or it is nothing but your self cure resin and also polystyrene so before making the custom tray the primary step is to condition the 
primary cast or the uh, preliminary or diagnostic cast. So once you make a primary impression, you pour the impression with dental plaster or POP. This is your type 1 uh, dental uh, gypsum products. Okay. So once you have obtained a cast, what you need to do is you need to soak it in water and then you outline the cast. So um, as you see that on the cast, there is first a, a lining which is marking the depth of the sulcus. And there is also a second lining which is 2 mm short of the depth of the sulcus which is uh, drawn to demarcate or uh, mark the extension of the custom tray. And 1 mm short of this is your spacer wax. So you, ad you adapt a spacer wax. Once you have um, applied the uh, petroleum jelly or the separating medium, then you adapt the spacer wax with tissue stops. And on top of that, the cold cure acrylic material or light cure acrylic material is adapted nicely. And hence your custom and then your custom tray is made. Okay. So why do you think is a spacer needed? Now you are already uh, seeing that a custom tray is made uh, adapted to the diagnostic cast and it confines the impression material. Then why do you need a spacer? So what does the spacer do? It records the tissues in a state of anatomical rest and it stabilizes the custom tray during impression making and also it relieves the non-stress bearing areas, right? So that the, there will not be excessive pressure in those areas and the uh, ridge resorption will be moderated, okay? And then coming to a spacer, a spacer should be at least 2 mm thick and usually we use the modeling wax, the KVX wax. Uh, we need to tamper it in a hot water bath before we adapt the spacer wax on the uh, primary cast. So while uh, doing the fabrication of the custom tray, there are three different techniques that you can use with the cold cure resin. That is the first one is your sprinkle on technique. Next is your dove technique and next one is your light cure technique. Sprinkle on technique, you take polymer uh, uh, powder in a dispenser and monomer liquid in an injection and you uh, dispense a little bit of polymer and on that you dispense the monomer injection material and that's how you form the custom tray. Next is your uh, dove technique. So uh, dove technique, you try to uh, mix polymer and monomer in a 3 to 1 ratio and you, uh, and you form a mold or a putty-like consistency material and that is adapted on the diagnostic cast. And next is your light cure technique. Um, in this picture, you can see that you have preformed shaped uh, light cure sheets. So this is adapted on the primary cast in this way and the excess material is cut out and then it is placed in the light curing machine for at least 10 minutes and according to the manufacturer's uh, time uh, uh, details that has been given. And after the uh, base of your custom tray is made, next thing is your handle. You need to make a handle which is usually placed in the uh, anterior uh, region which is at least uh, 3 mm thick uh, uh, in the mesodistal direction and uh, then in and uh, looking at the height, it should be at least 8 mm high for the lower uh, uh, ridge your mandibular ridge the ha the handle of the tray uh, should be parallel or perpendicular to the long axis uh, sorry parallel to the long axis of the teeth and um, for your maxillary it should be in an oblique direction or at a 45 degree angle that is projecting outwards uh, so that it eases the functional movements of your labial frenum or especially in the uh, lip area so once the handle and the tray is ready and the material has been set and you have trimmed all the excess what you need to do is you have to place it in a, um, a bowl of water you need to soak it in water so that it prevents the warpage of the uh, poly uh, polymer and uh, monomer mixture okay so in brief this is how your uh, steps go so you see in the first picture that there is a primary cast and in the second picture as i mentioned already there is an outline of the sulcus and then outline of the custom tray extension after which the petroleum uh, jelly or the separating media is applied and then 
a spacer is adapted after a spacer is adapted then you uh, place the uh, in this in this uh, image it's a dow method you adapt the uh, dow like consistency of your cold cure and you cut off the excess according to the second line second marking and then your handle is also fabricated so while making the secondary impression what is the first step the border molding border molding as i mentioned it is done usually in two ways that is your single step or your incremental way so when you're doing it in a single step what you need to do is you need to adapt the green stick compound or some or you can use also polystyrene and nowadays there are also uh, some clinicians who are comfortable using uh, putty uh, putty material uh, for their border molding so you adapt the material over the borders all over uh, in the labial area in the buccal area, buccal frenum area tuberosity area and the pps area place it in the patient mouth and very briskly you do all the functional movements that is your 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 uh, uh, doing the movements in the labial uh, uh, you do you move the uh, upper lip and your cheeks to record all the areas if you're not doing it in a single step the next way of doing it is the incremental step so in the incremental step you do it in the stepwise fashion so first you add in the buccal frenum area you mold that and then once you know that it's been recorded then you go to the next step then you go to the um, uh, to the uh, right uh, or to the left uh, buccal uh, flange areas and then next go to the tuberosity areas so that's how it is carried out in your incremental steps based on whether if it is a maxillary ridge or a mandibular ridge after the uh, border molding or the peripheral tracing has been completed next comes your wash impression so wash impression is usually made with zinc oxide eugenol or non-eugenol paste or for convenience sake nowadays we are also using light body or silicon material sometimes if you are you if you are doing uh, uh, something like an over denture case so in those cases you might have to uh, use a medium body uh, material because light body is very thin and fragile sometimes it might tear when you are trying to remove the impression yeah so and also while recording the secondary impression the uh, re recording of the posterior palatal seal area is the most important thing so uh, you know that uh, pps area is nothing but it is uh, located at the uh, it's a soft tissue uh, area rather i would say uh, present at the junction of hard and soft palate on which the pressure can be applied within the physiological limits of the tissues and this mainly helps in the retention of the denture so the pps area can be recorded uh, by four techniques that is your conventional approach that is your uh, border molding then second one is your fluid wax technique next is your arbitrary scraping of master cast and uh, next is uh, your extended palatal technique okay so in this picture you can see that uh, the custom tray is like this and then the green stick compound uh, is uh, placed uh, in incremental steps and then the shaping of the impression uh, is done by uh, again uh, once the uh, border molding is completed so once the green stick has been adapted all over your borders in the upper and the lower then what you do is uh, you can carry out the impression process so uh, what are the materials that you use for border molding it is low fusing compound or green stick compound in incremental technique then uh, what you do is you pass the impression compound uh, over the alcohol torch flame and then place it on the border and once uh, it has been placed on the border you should ensure that the green stick compound is not in a sticky stage so when it is and it should not be overheated because it loses its contents so it should not be overheated it should not be sticky but you should be able to adapt it with your uh, with your uh, gloves it should not stick to your gloves yeah so once it has been placed on the custom tray then you place it in a hot water bath and temper it once again in a in a cold bath and then place it in the patient mouth because while uh, uh, tampering it in a hot water bath if you're trying to take place it in the patient mouth immediately you tend to injure or uh, 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 burn the soft tissue of the patient so hence you should be careful about that and next is your uh, poly ether which is like the uh, which is carried out in the single step uh, technique uh, uh, this uh, material can be used for uh, doing the bottom molding in one step
but for incremental uh, way of doing border molding you usually do it in the uh, step uh, stepwise uh, fashion with green stick compound so when you're doing the labial sulcus you elevate the upper lip extend it outwards and then pull it downwards and then again adapt it inwards so uh, and uh, the same with your buccal cell uh, sulcus as well pull it outward downward and inward so this outward downward and inward is one is the the main thing that you will have to remember which i know will not be very uh, easy to comprehend when i'm explaining on the slides but you would rather understand it when you observe it in person or when you uh, see any videos which i would like to share uh, at later stage right and next coming to your posterior palatal seal uh, green stick compound is placed at the posterior most border and then it is placed in the patient mouth so you take a eosin uh, pencil and you dip it in uh, spirit and uh, the pps area must be dried with a cotton swab and you ask the patient to say ah in a vigorous fashion so when they say that word ah in a vigorous fashion what happens is you can uh, locate the junction of the hard and soft palate, uh, soft palate that is your anterior vibrating line and the posterior vibrating line so you mark this area with this uh, indelible pencil and then your tray is seated in the patient mouth so and then after that the patient is again asked to repeat the word ah so when they say that the the marking that you have done on the patient's palate is transferred to the custom tray and you know if there are any over extensions or under extension so if it is over extended you take a bp blade and you cut off the excess next uh, coming to border molding in the mandible so border molding in the mandible is also similar to that of the maxillae you use you, you uh, and every time please remember when you're doing the maxillary uh, border molding uh, stabilize the uh, custom tray in the patient mouth with your index finger and your middle finger of your left hand and use your right hand to do the border movement so you stabilize it with one hand two fingers on the ridge area and you uh, do the functional movements with your right hand so it's likewise in the uh, border molding in the mandible you place your two fingers on the uh, lower and you tend to uh, do the movements so uh, in this the labial flange is molded by lifting the lower lip outward upward and inward and also in the buccal frenum area outward upward and inward so in, and uh, when it is coming to the lingual flange area you ask the patient to anterior lingual flange to protrude the tongue against the part of the palate so they have to um, just uh, lift the tongue and touch the part of the palate and if it is a distal end of the lingual flange ask the patient to completely protrude his tongue outward so what happens when the tongue is moving outward the muscles of the tongue they adapt or uh, uh, shape the green stick compound in the distal lingual flange or the anterior lingual flange and that's how your green stick compound takes the reverse s shape in the uh, uh, um, retromylohyoid curtain area okay that is how that is what you need to relate to when you would have uh, heard about um, the different anatomy uh, in my first lecture okay and then after which you ask the patient to open his mouth wide to record the uh, retromolar pad so once the uh, uh impression uh sorry the border molding is carried out what you need to do is prepare the tray for impression making what you need to do you need to take out this wax spacer and uh, also the green stick that is placed on the borders has to be scraped off at least 0.5 to 1 mm of tracing material should be scraped off and uh, um, also uh, then you have to drill holes in the custom tray so that there is a way of escape for the excess impression material if there is anything and uh, also ensure that the green stick compound is minimum 2.5 to 3 mm thick before you make the final so uh, so once you are ready with your tray then you go ahead and make the impression so in your maxillary denture what is the importance of a posterior palatal seal the primary impor importance is the retention of the denture so just imagine if the patient has to wear his maxillary denture if there is no retention the retention can be only achieved by successfully locating the pps area and also transferring the same in your impression procedures so uh, it also helps in preventing the gag reflex and also 
this seal in the posterior most area prevents the uh, uh, you know uh, accumulation of food particles between the uh, soft palate and the denture border and it also helps in uh, compensating for the polymerization shrinkage uh, that happens during the curing cycles and also it acts as a stress bearing area so this is a very important two marker which you have to remember next coming to your secondary impression so secondary impression is nothing but a negative likeness uh, made for the purpose of fabricating a processes and it should have the finer details of the denture bearing area at, at a rest stage so how do you get a secondary impression first thing make a border molding or the peripheral dressing and then make the wash impression and the wash will definitely contain all the borders and also the pps areas so what are the impression materials uh, that you are going to use in this procedure usually it is zinc oxide eugenol paste and if the patient has any uh, sore spots or if the patient has undergone uh, extraction recently sometimes if the patient has any aphthous ulcers you should not be using zinc oxide eugenol paste because the eugenol in the uh, mixture will cause irritation of the soft tissue so in those cases you will use light body impression materials and as mentioned if you use if you are doing an over denture case you should use medium body impression material then what are the requirements of your uh, secondary impression your impression should be completely free of voids and in case if there are any uh, tiny voids it should be rectified with uh, wax and uh, also uh, then uh, next you have to uh, disinfect the impression like any other alginate uh, impression materials you need to disinfect the impression with iodophore or 2% glutaraldehyde for 10 minutes to make sure that the impression is not having any infections and also especially during this uh, covid season you should be even more careful uh, to ensure that um, there is no um, uh, saliva that is on the uh, impression material or uh, sorry the impression or even uh, the trays you should be very cautious to disinfect everything thoroughly before you uh, carry out the procedure so in a, uh, a, a, a complete picture this uh, slide you can see that the uh, custom tray has been made then the second one is your incremental border molding then place it in the patient mouth so that is how you need to step you need to place the custom tray in the patient mouth with one hand you stabilize it and then use uh, uh, one hand to do the movements so once the border molding is complete then you do uh, you punch holes uh, and uh, you make escape holes and then the impression material is uh, uh, placed in the impression uh, in the custom tray then the impression is made and finally you get your secondary impression okay so once you have uh, obtained your impression you do the disinfection so why uh, once the disinfection has been done uh, next step is your beading and boxing so what does beading and boxing do uh, it helps in preserving the width and height of the sulcus it uh, mainly preserves the mucobuccal and the mucolingual folds and uh, usually you use the utility wax and uh, boxing you can also use the utility wax or sometimes what you can do also is uh, uh, you can uh, do uh, a boxing with the help of pumice, uh, uh, plaster and pumice. So you, may, you can make a mixture of plaster and in that you place your impression uh, which has the beading and on top of that you pour the uh, uh, dental stone and form the uh, secondary cast. That is one way of doing it. But in this technique what happens is you are also wasting a lot of uh, dental uh, plaster which is like use of excess material. Uh, and I would recommend that you wouldn't use that uh, kind of technique, but you should do beading and boxing wherein you are beading the uh, uh, impression and then you use wax itself to contain the base of the impression material as well. And next uh, is your master cast uh, preparation. So to define master cast is nothing but is a replica of the tooth structures, the residual ridge areas and other parts of the dental arch or facial structures used to fabricate a dental restoration or process okay so and finally uh, apart from all your uh, conventional impression techniques next is your special impression technique for compromised ridges uh, so in your uh, maxillae if you have seen any uh, flabby tissue in the diagnostic stage 
you make uh, you make the impression with the help of a window technique wherein you inject another uh, impression material or you use dental plaster to inject in the flabby tissue area so that you do not over compress the soft tissue if the if there is a flabby tissue and you tend to compress or you do a mucocompressive impression technique what happens is the soft tissue is subject to rebound so it will be compressed and it will return to its original state so what happens there will be an uh, ill fitting of the denture or the processes and there is no adaptation of the denture on the uh, soft tissue area and uh, when com coming to the uh, uh, severely resorbed uh, mandibular ridges there are different kinds of techniques in which uh, it is cocktail technique uh, green all green technique admixed uh, technique and neutral zone technique so there are different kinds of techniques that you can be using because you have to modify your impression technique not all patients are the uh, same so each patient might have a different systemic condition based on that you have to uh, take a call and uh, modify your impression techniques so uh, i hope i hope uh, that uh, and uh, also regarding spacers there is a special article by dr sanath shetty which i will also be sharing on the uh, e portal so which you can go through and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, acquaint yourself with the different spacer techniques in which conditions uh, you know which spacer is being used and uh, also what are the different impression techniques for uh, com extremely resorbed uh, ridges okay so i hope uh, i was able to explain things to you in a clear fa uh, way uh, about border molding and uh, i hope that uh, uh, although if you have any um, doubts in this you can please feel free to contact uh, us and ask us uh, doubts and start a discussion and we will also uh, show it to you in demonstration when you move to your uh, clinicals so that you can be aware of the techniques and in a more uh, uh, you know a more better way yeah thank you